while I'm here, I shall insert another loop into the outer edge of the eye. This part of the topology is really down to how much detail you feel you need for your character. I know I'm going to be spreading out quite a few points here, so I'm happy to add them in. I'm going to go ahead and even out these spots now. We'll now continue the loop up from the edge of the mouth around the nostril. This will need to be redirected using a pole and a three point edge like so. The remaining quads can now wrap around the nostril and join onto the upper mouth. We'll need to make sure that these points are nicely spread out for this step. Notice that there is also a pole around the edge of the mouth. Okay, so I'm going to fill in the remaining quads around this filtrum area. Now that we've reached the lower nose, I'm going to connect this gap with two central faces. This will create another set of poles that we can use to form the loops up into the nostrils. Once you've filled in the nostrils, you are ready to finally fill in the eye sockets and the ears. I'm going to time lapse this section, as the topology doesn't have to be as strict here. You've got to bear in mind that in the eye sockets, once you actually place an eyeball in there, you're not really going to see what's going on behind the actual eyeball. And with the ears, they're generally not going to deform too much during a facial movement. So you don't have to be too strict with your topology here, guys. And this is also a good time for you to add any extra loops that you think your character might need. Okay, now that we've finished the head, we of course need to topologize the body. Now, the body mostly consists of uniform loops. However, you will of course need poles and free edge points in particular areas. To complete the uniform quads of the body, I'm going to speed up the process by using the topology brush. But if you want to follow along using a Z-sphere, then that's absolutely fine also. Uh, if you got to this point in the video, I'd like you to bear in mind that this is just a way of retopologizing the body. It's not the way. There are many different ways. So um, if this is your first time doing retopology, then great. I hope this is a good guideline for you, but I'd advise exploring other methods also. Right, let's get going. So first, I'm going to select the body subtool, and I'm going to use the topology brush. The shortcut for this brush is BTO. So when I click and drag out over my sculpt, we can see that we get these cool looking edges. You can create a loop by making the edge join back on itself like so. You can delete the lines by drawing another one through them whilst holding down Alt. Now most importantly, whenever you draw out four clean edges like this, you will get quads. They will highlight in yellow uh, if you've done it correctly. So make sure symmetry is turned on. Now remember, 8 is our magic number for this walkthrough, so we're going to form a loop around the breast and split it into 8 quads, like this. Now moving on to the arm, I want to create loops going down the entirety of this section. Now I could pan around the arm to drag out the loop, which would be pretty damn time consuming, or I can just hold down shift after I've clicked and dragged my cursor out over the outside area and then if I simultaneously release boom we have a nice clean loop alright so I'm going to continue these down the arm another useful trick you can do is hold down space just before you commit to this loop and that will allow you to decide whereabouts it's going to go laterally the amount you'll need is entirely dependent on your model once this is in place I'm going to drag out the cross-sectional edges from the wrist up towards the shoulder this can be quite tricky if you don't have good dexterity with your mouse or tablet. Okay, you might find it easier to angle the arm towards you so that you don't have to drag your cursor out as far. Holding shift to draw out a perfectly straight edge may also help you. Okay, so I'm going to cut out eight faces into the arm here, 
four on top and four on the bottom. Right, so as you can see, this has made swift work of that section. Now, bear in mind the topology isn't entirely complete in that area. I will need to add more geometry for where the elbow is bending, for example, and also around the shoulder joint. But that is a lot easier to do when I switch back over to the Z-sphere later on. Okay, I'm going to pretty much repeat the exact same process with the legs now. I'm going to try to get the top loops as close to the crease underneath the buttocks as possible. I'll then continue these down the leg again and insert eight edges as cross sections. I'll likely need to add more again later on, but for now I'll try and keep it as simple as possible. Right, now that those loops are in place I'm ready to commit and join them up to my Z-sphere topology. Now this can be a little confusing at first, so I'll try and be extra clear. Firstly, we need to commit to this topology by clicking on the underlying sculpt. Notice how the sculpt is now masked off and in dark grey. Our topology is now polygons, however they have thickness that we don't want. Now this thickness is simply determined by the brush draw size when you click the underlying sculpt. So I'm going to undo and make sure that my draw size is at zero. Now when I click on the sculpt we can see that the new topology has no mesh thickness. We can now split this mesh off from the underlying sculpt by going to split and clicking split unmasked points. We'll now see that the topology we created has its own subtool. What we now need to do is clone this topology and the Z-sphere topology we created earlier on. So select both of those subtools, give them a sensible name like head topo or body topo and clone them. You'll now notice that the subtools in your original stack are now named something under scroll one. What we have just cloned will have the original name that you gave it, and it will now be its very own subtool. And like I said, it can be a little confusing at first. Just go up to the top panel and find the body's topology name and select it. Good. Now what you'll need to do is append and insert the head topology. So go to append and find whatever you called that. Now that they are both in the same subtool, we can merge them down by going to merge, merge down. All right, so now that they're both uh, one subtool, give it a name that is sensible and makes it easy to find, like um, compile topo. Okay, switch back over to the original tool where all of your other body parts and retopologies are. Insert a new Z sphere and once again position it somewhere within the center of the body like so. Now, when you go down to edit topology, this time press select topo and then select your compiled topology. Excellent, you should now see all of your topology combined and in place ready for further editing. So this process is a really useful trick for combining topology methods created elsewhere or even in other software. I'm going to round off the middle of this breast area to make a nipple. You'll notice that this creates four free edged points. These nearly always occur when closing multiple quads as we did with the nostrils. I'll continue adding loops to the breast area. Once again, the amount you add is model dependent. Now that the breasts are covered, I'm going to remove the top points to allow for some poles on the sides. Under the inner crease of the breasts, we are going to create eight quads. These will wrap around the back of the body. This will also create two poles at either side of the bottom of the breast. I'm now going to create a loop that will go around the shoulder. Once again, this will consist of eight quads. And I'm going to make sure that the top two quads have an edge that goes right through the middle of the shoulder. The point two faces down from the middle of the shoulder will be another pole. I'm going to connect that up to the loops on the breast. I'm also going to connect these faces around the back too. I'll leave them stretched out for now. On the sides of the shoulder I'm going to create three faces that will wrap around where the muscle meets the arm. Notice how this gives us more geometry for the top of the shoulder than it does for what's underneath around the armpit. I'll now go ahead and insert another edge loop into those faces through and around the back. This edge will also continue around the front and soften the crease around the breasts. I'm now going to join the underside of the armpit to the arm. This will create a pole as indicated. 
I'll fill in another row in the deltoid area like so. And I'm going to insert two edge loops either side of the middle of the shoulder. Now remember this means that I should create another two edge loops in the armpit area to keep things even. Simply put two at the top and two at the bottom. With these points all evened out, I can now fill in the gap in the deltoids. Notice that this requires a free edged point either side of the shoulder. The remaining gap between the arm and the shoulder can now be filled in like so. I'll start filling in the gap between the breasts as well. I don't want all of these edges going up towards the neck, so I shall round them off with another free edge point like so. I can now continue the row above this area. It will connect to the pole we created earlier at the edge of the shoulder. I'm now going to create another two faces at the top middle of the shoulder as well. This will form the clavicle loop consisting of three faces from the pole as indicated. This will of course be repeated around the back. While we're doing this, we can now go ahead and fill in the remaining gap between the clavicle and the back loops. I'm now going to create a central loop that wraps around the groin and the buttocks. You may use as many points as necessary here, but once again, start with fewer, divide later, and whatever you change at the front, you need to reflect at the back. With this in place, I can now fill in the rows down to the mid hips. Where the groin meets the legs, we will need a pole to allow for multi-directional edge flow. We will also need a pole in a similar place at the back. From here, it will just be a case of filling in the rest of the quads to fit your model. Because of the particular mesh density of this model, I'm going to add an extra edge loop going down the back and into the legs. Finally, I'm going to fill in the gap between the clavicle and the neck. There's quite a lot more polygons going through my neck than my clavicle, so I'm going to round a couple of these off. This will also help me to create a bit of definition where the clavicle would meet the sternum in the middle. Okay, great. We are nearly there with the body. A couple of extra things that I like to add are some additional loops for the belly button, elbows and knees. Um, I'm also going to do a bit of a clean up around the back of the head and where it attaches to the clavicle. Um, some of those I could do with rounding off. I don't need all of that geometry going through the neck. Uh, for this section, I will time lapse, but I will also continue to highlight the three and five edge points accordingly so that you guys can follow along. As you can see, I'm creating the flow around the knee the same way I did with the elbow. Just pause the video or refer back to it if you need to. Alright, so well done for making it this far. I won't be showing you how to retopologize the hands and feet in this video. Um, the reason for that is that I'll mostly be using a similar process as I did with the body to complete them. And this is already a very long walkthrough. However, I would advise that you only retopologize what is actually visible on your character. If you're never going to see their bare feet, then don't worry about retopologizing those. It's a waste of time. Make sure that the fingers or toes are nicely spread out, though, before you attempt to make all of those polygons in between them. Okay, so to summarize, I would say that the key things you need to remember about topology is that you need to keep everything flowing in quads as often as you can. Only use five edge points where you need to split the direction of the edge flow and only use free edged points where you need to close the direction of the edge flow. Lastly, always apply more geometry to the outside of hinge joints as opposed to the inside.
This applies particularly to the fingers, elbows and knees. All right, everyone. So that wraps it up for this walkthrough. I really hope that this has helped you. And if you have any comments or questions, then please share them. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.